year and a half ago, I decided that I was going to take a big fishing trip for my 60th birthday. And I wanted to fly fish for fish that I had never caught before. I was going through a magazine and found um, an article about the Seychelles, the Outer Atolls, and Cosmolito. The first time I came was, I was invited by Keith Rosinas. So we kept in contact and he said, you got to come out here, Rocky, and try this out. And I said, I'm in. It was a phenomenal trip. It was completely different than the trevally fishing I had before. I, I read about it. I heard about it. People talked to me about it. And I, I just had to come here to see what it was all about. It, it's like something I've never experienced. It was an amazing experience just to get to Mahe and then to get on that flight to Alphonse, to get to a stove, take the boat over. All this anticipation was building the whole time. Getting here that night, having a meal, meeting everyone, knowing the next morning that I would be on the water, and finally getting a chance to do this after more than a year of anticipation and preparing. Right now, um, Cosmolido Lagoon is uh, one of the islands in the um, what we call the Aldabra group. In the Aldabra group, you have the Aldabra, Assumption, Astove, and Cosmo. So, Cosmo, we're 560 nautical miles from the mainland, you know, from my direct. And yeah, that's pretty much the, the furthest we can be away from, from, from the mainland, you know, from Mahi. It's like you landed on the moon, you know? <laughs> you literally get here and you just, you're blown away. You're just out there. And the thing about Cosmo is like, you're here and there's nothing around. And you look around and even if, the, even if the fishing's a little off or you're in between tides and it's kind of, you know, tapered up, it's, it's the most incredible place you've ever been to. Cosmo has got the, the biggest population of, of jeets in the Seychelles, yeah. I mean, it's offshore and on the flats, you, you can fish for them. I mean, you, you're looking for fish all day on the flats, yeah, and you, you can see up to 50, 60 fish in a day, yeah. You know, most of the time you're looking for them on, on rays, many multiple fish on rays. And a lot of guys just come out here to, to fish those, those black fish on the rays. And that's, that's awesome to watch a fish come off the, on the white sand. Here's a ray, it's got two jeets on him. Okay, black fish. Okay, make a shot. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, put it down, put it down. Okay, wait for him, wait, 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 wait. Okay, strip, 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 strip. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, baby! Woo! <laughs> yeah, I mean, Cosmo, sort of the GT capital of the world, but there's a lot of other things to catch here. There are massive bonefish. I mean, you guys have seen those, the bones we've caught. I mean, on average, some of the schools are going to be six, seven pounds each, you know, and that'll be your average fish. And then the, the trigger fishing as well. The, the triggers, there's, there's so many areas where you can fish them on the, on the pushing tide or even on the dead low tide. And different situations as well where you're fishing the fish off the boat and they, they I mean, the, they, they're eating your fly at the rod tip. It's really cool to see. When it's quiet, you can, there's not much going on. We, we tease outside um, or just pop. So, I mean, as all, well, I mean, teasing outside, you never know what you're going to catch. There's, there's yellowfin and wahoo and, and sometimes even sailfish coming up. Come on. Set it up, set it. So, it's, it's, it's really cool to see them, what hits that teaser. Even the dredging side of things, if things go quiet, we like to send a bit of uh, dredging lines down and, and see what we can, see what we can uh, haul up and permits as well. There's some massive permit that live here. Um, obviously they're perms and you've got, to, you've got to search for them and they don't often take your fly because they're very tricky. You know, the, the permit, you have, you have to get some passion with a permit, you know, because sometimes you put your fly on that side, you know, like where you're facing, and then you just change where, you know, 
Okay. And now you have to sweep them a bit slow. Slowly, sometimes you have to sweep slowly and long sweep. Sometimes you have to stop when it's coming. Sometimes you just come straight on it. Take it, you know, and set the hook and let it rain. And uh, after that, you know, don't put your no, no drag too strong, you know. Even no, no drag, you know. Just make sure you're really not spin like the, the, your line, you know. And uh, just take time. Yeah. I'm going to use the net to, to land that pervert and then I have to throw the net away and grab it yeah. because it's, it's really get, get tangled. You want yeah. to hide under the net <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah. A permit will drive you crazy. The permit is never enough, you know. You can catch 20 permit, 30 permit, 100 permit in your life. It's never enough, but a JIT will always, always be the one that you, you're gonna come, you know. You, everybody bring a 12 foot. You bring a 12 foot for one reason. It's just for jeets. You know, one morning you go and you're up on a flat looking for bonefish, and the next thing you know, the guide's saying, drop the rod, drop the rod. And, you, and you're like, drop the, what? Drop my rod? And you literally throw your rod in the water. And next thing you know, you got your 12 weight in your hand and there's a GT, you know, cruising up the flat and you're just trying to put a cast in front of it. You know, you went from fishing for a school of bonefish to throwing it, a, you know, a, a 80 centimeter, 90 centimeter, 100 centimeter GT swimming up the flats that, you get it in front of him and it's just on. It's just on, he comes after it and you're just stripping as hard as you can. You're watching your hand to make sure you grab the line and it just explodes and just all hell breaks loose and you just focus on what you're doing and it's, it, it's insane, it's crazy. It's the coolest thing ever. GT fishing himself, it's, it's patient, especially if you're looking for fish like over a meter. You're hunting them, um, you in their territorial, you have to think the way they think, you have to move pretty much how they want to move, and you want to be quiet, you cannot disturb them, stay in their own nature, and when it comes, it's going to give you one shot. And they're not easy come like, come, downwind. They always come in the wrong direction for you to cast. You know, you gotta struggle to get in. So we were walking the beach. Um, it was pretty much late in the afternoon. It was the last move of the day. Um, there were never two silver fish, but like closer to the beach themselves. Um, so we start shipping and one of those fish saw the fly. He actually reacts straight on the fly and he's coming to eat, but he was like running out of, of water. So he comes sideways and turns sideways to eat the fly. So you can imagine how a fish can, can hunt in, in shallow water, turn sideways to kill something that, that he wants to, you know. It's, it's deep, so when they want to kill something, they come in, you know. If you see him, he's on the flat, he's hungry, you put your fly two, three meters in front, a rod length, two rod length, you see it is coming, you know it's gonna eat. You know? if, you, if you miss a strip, it's gonna stop. That fish can come like 100 miles an hour, and you miss one strip, and that fish just stop and eat that. And obviously, clearing up the, the extra line and get out on the reel and start fighting the fish, that's the next level. But I think the exciting part for me is actually 
you know, while you're stripping and he's charging the fly and attacking it, that's very powerful. And you've got to do the right thing by setting up that hook properly, you know, not lifting your rod, you know, for sure. Okay? He is so ferocious. He's ferocious. Anything that moves yard, anything that he wants to kill, he's going to die. Just a pissed off monster. They're incredible. GT comes in and he sees something moving. It's gone. It's He's all over. It's a brutal moment. And, uh, and that's kind of what makes it so special. Oh, here comes it. There's a big Jeep coming. Big Jeep coming, Kate. Okay. Put the fly down. Put it down, put it down. It's coming, it's coming. When you make that cast and that fish turns on your fly, it's electric. I feel like when you set the hook on other fish, you pull and you do that strip set and you feel like you actually gain something from the fish. Like you might get that first inch on the fish. I think on a GT you don't get that first inch. That fish hits and you strip and all you're trying to do is pull that hook in. But that fish, the second it turns, it's got you. It's going where it's gonna go. You just, you react, and if thinking goes away, your reaction just must be quick, and, and then you feel, and when you feel the weight of the fish, and the resistance on your line, and that line starts to go back out through your hand, and you're looking to make sure that you're not caught on anything like your feet, or around your reel, or all that stuff, um, time slows down for a second and it's all you're living in the moment. I have so much respect for them. They're such a cool fish. By the time I got that fish in, I had to sit down and take a rest. <laughs> it was tremendous. It, it was it was incredible. I, I, I wasn't expecting 
get to be that cool. It was, I'm hooked. I'll be back. It was a magical experience. I loved it. So from that moment, I was like, okay, this trip can be over now. I caught my GT. That was great. So that was, that was my first experience with GTs. It was terrific. I would put them on a flat on top of the food chain. <laughs>